Does doing this lead to hypertrophy? Is it enough to just simply lift weights and put it back? Or there should be something else to think about, like the proper technique, the correct number of reps, the correct number of exercises and sets in each exercise. Should it be that complicated? So if you lift, you probably wondered, why do our bodies build muscles? Luckily, there are plenty of theories, or better to say, hypotheses, that try to answer the question. However, none of this hypothesis actually does. So the first says lactate is responsible for muscle growth, which of course you can debunk within just half a minute. If you do gazillion of air squats each day, it's not gonna build bigger legs than doing just, you know, several reps with the heavy barbell, right? So this theory seems pretty damn dubious. Another theory that says that it's all about blood restriction. So when you exercise, you restrict the muscles from the blood flow. So when you finish the exercise, after this blood flow just rushes to the muscles and uh, somehow it causes the muscle growth, of course, again, you can completely debunk it. If you just use coughs and restrict your muscles from the blood flow, it's not gonna make muscles big, right? So again, it seems very dubious, even more dubious than lactate-based theory. There is another one that it says it is about muscle inflammation. Probably we shouldn't even stop here because it's the same concept as the previous two, which we can describe using a very scientific term as BS. But there is another hypothesis, which stands for muscle damage, aka microtrauma theory. So behind this, there is a principle that when you exercise, you kind of damage your muscles and then afterwards when you recover they grow bigger and stronger here's a slight issue though if you do martial arts you're getting kicked and punched all the time and why then if it's about muscle damage we can safely assume that something as low kicks won't cause any hypertrophy whatsoever and all the things that we mentioned are present during exercises but it's definitely not the main reason so everybody now it's talking about mechanical tension. So mechanical tension theory says that it actually doesn't matter what this theory says. And everything that we just said doesn't matter either. Do you know why? Look at the title of the video. What question do you see? Why, right? It's not how. And there is a difference between how and why. And all those theories, they actually answer the question how. That's the main problem. I understand in some cases it can be interchangeable. If you ask a question, how do I get jacked? It will mean that you're asking a question what to do to get jacked, right? But if you try to answer the question what to do, in other words, why? Using those theories that answer the question how, it actually doesn't make sense. Because those theories describe the process the mechanisms that take place in our body, which of course not gonna be helpful in the gym. In other words, you wanna find what those outer factors that make our bodies build muscles. And the funny enough, but we still don't know 100% how our body builds muscles. But we knew even thousands of years ago why. And now also, everybody does. But some people act like we don't. So we gotta use some science, do some research, and find this hidden knowledge. We can answer the question why using just one word. So adaptation. It is in charge of literally every alteration, every slight modification when we acquire new skills, when we improve some physical abilities like endurance, flexibility, and on and on. So you can compare building muscles with, for instance, call conditioning. If I ask you a question, how does our body get called conditioned? You're gonna probably mumble something about brown fat and that modern science doesn't really know the answer, but I will go, no, 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 listen. I didn't mean that. I meant what to do to get called conditioned. And you're probably gonna stare at me and say like, listen. To get cold conditioned, just go and get cold conditioned, right? So you gotta put your body in a cold environment with enough stress, but not too much, and being consistent, eventually you'll get cold conditioned. Modern science doesn't really know how it happens, but we 100% know that, first of all, it is possible. Second, what to do 
You think building muscles is so different? But why is it that complicated then? Because people confuse the reason and the result. You see, when we talk about hypertrophy training, it's actually a little bit wrong name. Because when we talk about endurance training or flexibility, mobility routine or any sort of things like this, there is the, some skill or some ability that we have to develop, right? But when you say hypertrophy training, doesn't mean that your body has to get bigger, like has to get more voluminous. No, because why? So what do you do in the gym? Resistance training, right? So your body has to adapt to this resistance. And how to adapt to it? There is only one way, is to increase strength. And now you're saying, but you can get bigger with... No, you can't. You can get stronger without getting bigger. But getting bigger, aka hypertrophy, is one of the tools that will make you stronger. So if you got stronger, it doesn't automatically mean that you got bigger. But if you got bigger, it means that you got stronger because it means that you build thicker muscles. So now they can produce more force. It's just simple physics. I have to get stronger. Okay, how can I get stronger? There are plenty of ways. One of them, hypertrophy. It's not like you train for hypertrophy. You use hypertrophy to get stronger. You understand what I'm saying? So if you think that I'm wrong, okay, provide at least one physical ability that will benefit from hypertrophy. The only one thing that will benefit from it is strength. Okay, but can you order your body to build muscles over, let's just say, improving CNS efficiency? The only one way to emphasize hypertrophy is to eat more because in this case your body will see that okay we got plenty of resources and energy so now we can build more muscle fibers but if you're in a calorie balance your body will do everything to improve strength without building bigger muscles and this is why when people compare bodybuilders with power lifters they do it wrong because they compare bodybuilders with a calorie surplus with power lifters in the weight classes like 90 100 kilos 82.5 kilos where people actually in a calorie balance because otherwise you're gonna go in a higher weight class and they want, don't want to do it right so how can you even compare those things i don't even talk about different steroids and of course difference in genetics okay if it's so easy why are still people arguing about this because there's one thing that completely ruined our perception of training and brought total mess of course, I'm talking about steroids. You see, we were talking about myofibril hypertrophy. Your muscles have two parts. One that can contract and another one which is non-contractable, I suppose. So this part that can contract consists of lots of components. And the main component is water. So as you know, steroids are responsible for water retention. Like when I took steroids, my face was like a moon face, like I was puffy. I had the ripped six pack, single digit body fat. It seems like when you take steroids, it is possible to increase the amount of interstitial fluid up to wazoo and get bigger without really building myofibrils. But when you are natural, it seems like it is completely not possible. So if you train naturally, you have only one way to get bigger. But if you train on steroids, you open another one. You know this typical steroid bodybuilder training, which looks like a gazillion of reps, a gazillion of sets, a gazillion of exercises with tiny weight, slow and control stretch and all this bullshit. You know what I'm talking about exactly. And you look at those guys and they're so big, like they are bigger than any natural you can possibly think of. But if I train like this, for instance, I will just shrink and, of course, be weak AF. And here's why you see in steroid bodybuilding community, there is no just one opinion on how to train properly. You see those guys promote some volume. You see guys promote intensity. You see guys promote basic compound movements. You see guys promote some isolation and, you know, cable crap. And you're like, hmm, this doesn't make sense because they're all big. But if you have a look at the natural lifters, you'll see that they all promote roughly the same thing. Yeah, they might disagree on some nuances on how to train, but mostly 
the approach is just lift freaking heavy and get stronger. I think it's not a coincidence that most of the best natural bodybuilders are also very strong. And last but not the least, I mentioned strength many times, and lots of people think of strength training as something that is one to six rep max in powerlifting movements. And there's tons of bodybuilders that have gotten insanely jacked, like Jay Cutler, yeah. doing sets of 10 to 15 on average, and have never really done much in the 5 to 10 range and even lower. So something as 10 reps is not about strength. Okay, how's this? Imagine there is a guy who does two plate bench for 10 reps. After some training, he can do now 15 reps. Or he can do 110 kilos for 10 reps. What does it mean? Hmm, interesting. Probably it means that he got stronger. It's not enough number of reps, so we can say that his gains came from improving injuries. Because if it were like 40 reps versus 45 reps, yeah, it might be a good indicator that he improved his injuries, but 10 versus 15, 12 reps, 8 reps, 6 reps, it's like it's all about strength only. And every BS that's being promoted to you, you gotta filtrate through this axiom that we established already, that to get bigger, you have to get stronger. For instance, if somebody suggests that doing like the specific type of bicep curls will blow your arms, uh, no, because it contradicts with the logic that the main reason is to get stronger, not to get stronger in the specific angle or in a specific range of motion. And here's why all these debates about the better technique, cheat versus street form, full ROM versus half ROM, concentric versus eccentrics, or only concentrics, it all doesn't make sense. Simply because when you're performing the exercise, do you use some magic force to move the weight? Mm, not really, right? Use the strength of your muscles. So if you get stronger, does it freaking matter how? No, it doesn't. So guys, enough of this. If you're a natural lifter, just get stronger. Get a hell out of here.